Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com and today we have the Interlocking Shells Blanket. Now what I did is that I had a pattern that kept getting requested and it was a pattern from Yarnspirations.com that we taught and it was from the middle and it was using this shell concept and starting off with, as a square and I've seen several comments about wanting people wanting to do it as a rectangle. So I decided during a big snowstorm to put my hook in the wind and figure it out on how to do it as a rectangle. So it took me quite some time to do it but what I decided to do is that I came up with the one that was in here within blue. But I realized being a host on YouTube is that when I do one size people are saying I wish you would have done the twin size or I wish you would have done a wheelchair size or a baby blanket. So what I decided to do is I spent a whole day trying to figure out all the mathematics and doing a sample. So here is the twin size and here are the other sizes. So the size that's going to be listed in the pattern is the, si is the size that's suggested in the video title. So the introductions for all four of these will be exactly the same. So let me tell you what the differences are. So the small size is going to cover baby blankets, child size blankets, teenager blankets, even queen size with draping on the sides of the mattress and king size for both the mattress and the drape. For the medium that we have here this is for wheelchairs, baby blankets, a child size blankets and teenager blankets. So it has that nice uh, item that you have. So the spine is longer so that it will grow more in a rectangular format. For the large size, great for child size and teenager size blankets. And then what we have here for this one here, this one is the twin size uh, for that. You can use it for cribs if you want to do that, cradles, uh, queen size with no drape as well. So just make sure that if you ever do it for a crib or a cradle you're just uh, conscious of what you can put in that. So just exercise your caution and some people suggest not to put blankets and those kind of things. So I'm going to leave that to your discretion. I do have it figured out just in case that's something that you're interested in. So without further ado I used Karen uh, Jumbo or sorry Karen one pound yarn. For tutorial reasons I'm going to have some fun here with the Karen Jumbo yarn. This is called Lake Mist. It's very much like Red Heart Super Saver Ombre where it changes color on its own and so when you see the colors changing we're going to go. So let's go on to the size that's suggested in the video title and let's show you how to get started because once you get the spines done then you can get everything done and it will grow out evenly even if you change the hook or the yarn. So here's an example. So this is the very first one I did just to test it and so this is the medium size that you saw within the blue sample. And so it got bigger and bigger and I went and I just had some fun with the color play with the Karen one pound yarn and I thought it turned out really good. The trick with this is that we need to get the spine figured out and the shells in place and then once you get that done it's just a matter of repeating two rows or two rounds over and over and over. So the different size of the spines is obviously shorter for the small, a little bit longer for the large and then there's a significant portion then for the twin size. Let's begin the size that we're promising today. So we're now going to do the extra large version which is right here. This is the twin size. This is one that most of you may end up doing. Uh, a lot of people when they have like square or uh, like morally rectangle like this it would not fit a twin size blanket. So you need your spine to be a lot bigger. Now when I was in the trucking industry I was crocheting then and I needed to do a twin size uh, mattress for myself and so what I did is I did a chain work what I thought that would work and my blanket ended up being way too long in in order by the time that I got to the width that I needed. So the trick is is to know exactly how much a spine that you need. So when this is growing out it will hit the edges of the bed on the uh, the sides and then also within the length. So I figured that out mathematically for you. So we're going to begin the extra large size next. So as we look at the large size that I just actually filmed you're going to notice that th the only thing is is that it's going to be a length issue. So it's just going to be longer. You have to watch the spaces that are in between the centers here. So the edges always have this chain four space but the ones in between these always are a chain three skipping over when you're doing it. So I did try chaining three in order to keep consistent here and it was buckling the end. So that's why there's a chain four. So it, it sits more flat so you never have that issue. So let's officially begin and let's grab our Karen Jumbo Yarn 6 millimeter size J crochet hook in order to play. 
Okay, so let's play and do some fun stuff and you're gonna create a slip knot. This is an intermediate level and I need you to chain 53. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 53 and meet me back here in a moment. So I now have 53 and you clearly can see that it's been much longer than the other samples that I have been running. So we're going to go across this like we did with the other samples. The only difference is, is that it's longer. So we're going to go fifth chain from the hook. So count it back and it's one, two, three, four, and five. The fifth chain, turn it over to the back hump because it'll look nicer. I want you to double crochet. Now I want you to chain one and double crochet back in. This will be considered a V-stitch. So a V-stitch is double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. Now because it's an end, I need you to skip the next four chains that you see and you're gonna go to the fifth chain away and then that's where you're going to begin your sequence going all the way across to the other side. So before you start, just chain up one, skip the four and go to the fifth and double crochet into the back hump of the chain. The next chain is going to be a V-stitch. So it'll be a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And then in the next chain it's going to be a double crochet. So this is going to be the foundation of a future shell, shell in the future. Originally when I designed this I never had these extra double crochets in here and it looks too empty in the middle. So those double crochets are acting as filler. Before you move on, chain one and this time you're only gonna skip three. And you're going to do exactly what you just did. So you'll double crochet. In the next stitch you will V-stitch. And in the next stitch right after it, it's double crochet. So I'm gonna ask you to keep repeating this over until you get close to the other side. So just create that. So chain of one, skip the next three and do exactly what I just showed you and please meet me closer to the end of this uh, line in just a moment. So you're gonna see all these sequence going all the way across and as you get close you're gonna end up with the last five chains. You're gonna skip the next four and in the fifth chain before you start that make sure you chain one and you are going to do your first going all the way around this so that you're crocheting on the underside of this. So in the fifth chain away put in a V-stitch. So we have the one V-stitch and this will be considered this side of the blanket. So a nice flat side. So now we're gonna do the end of the blanket. So we have to chain one and in the same chain I need you to place in a V-stitch. And this will be considered the short side. Chain one and continue to turn this upside down and just V-stitch all over uh, once again. And chain one. So you can see that you have the V-stitch that matches this side. You now have a V-stitch that is on the edge and now this V-stitch is on this side. The nice thing about going across the back side of this is that the stitch work has already been determined for you because you've already counted. So after you've done your chain one which I already did you're just gonna match exactly what you see. So there's a double crochet by itself. So place in the same spot a double crochet. The next one has a V-stitch. So you're gonna place in a V-stitch in that. The next one is a double crochet by itself and then you have the space. And remember that the space just to get to the next one is only chain one for you and then you just start again. So it's gonna be a double crochet sitting in this double crochet look to what's below. There is a V-stitch so make it a V-stitch. And then the next one is a double crochet. And I need you to do this all the way across and I will see you close to the other side in just a moment. So please just move yourself across. When you get closer to the other side you're gonna have this and a portion of your edge is already done. So I've chained one after I did this configuration and I'm going to V-stitch in the same V-stitch that we started with. And here's the trick. You're going to chain one. This V-stitch that's on the edge is already partially done. So you're just gonna double crochet into the same chain. Chain one and you're going to attach to the third chain or sorry to the 
um, to the fourth chain here. Just guess it looks it, it'll be fine and therefore you'll have the end. So the end will have a V stitch, V stitch and V stitch and on the way on the other side was exactly the same thing. So V stitch, V and V. So you're going to notice see how it's kind of loosey goosey there that will tighten up as this moves on and let's begin round number two. To begin round number two right where we're sitting is the wrong spot. So we need to come into the space between the V stitches. So just right here. So slip stitch on over and then we'll talk. In the V stitch that you have here and here and here they're all gonna be dub uh, seven double crochets which equals a shell. Here's the thing though. The spaces in between all have to have a single crochet that will hold it down. So let me demonstrate for you. So right where you're sitting I need you to chain one and single crochet into the space that is before the next V stitch. So here's the V stitch. Place in seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This space right here is going to be one single crochet and that will help push that chain to strengthen it to, to push it out. So single crochet there. So now look for the next V stitch and place in seven double crochet there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So once that seven's done you're gonna look for the space be between and single crochet in and then look for the next V stitch. So I want you to do that all the way across and I'll see you at the first turn in just a moment. So as you're coming along you'll notice that it's kinda turning a little bit. Don't worry about it because once you put the other side on here it'll flatten and straighten right back up. So you're going to single crochet in the space before the next V stitch. Here are the corners and the edge because we've got the long edge it's short and long in the same section here. You're going to uh, put seven double crochets right into this V stitch. In the space before the next V stitch single crochet and now you're going to do the short edge. So right in that V stitch you're going to place in seven double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's the short edge done and in the next space before the next V stitch single crochet which will hold that and then in the next V stitch another seven. So on this round, round number two, the ends look like a three leaf clover. Is there such thing? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm just making it up as I go. So you got five, six, and seven. And then come into the same space. So if, if you're not sure where to go just look below like a mirror and it's single crochet in the space and then each one of these V stitches get it to seven double crochet and then single in the space, seven double crochet and etc. So please do this all the way across to the other side and um, you can turn the corner if you wish but I will just meet you there just to make sure. So coming close to the other side the color did change on its own and I want to go into this V stitch. So portion of the end has already been done when we started. So you're just gonna put in your seven double crochets here. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. In the space be before the next V stitch single crochet and this is the short edge and it will be seven double crochets there. Once these seven are in you're going to then sing, uh, slip stitch to the first single crochet to conclude it. So your ends should look like a three leaf clover if that exists. Just like that. 
Okay, so let's begin round number three and four. Three and four is going to be the repeat no matter how big that you wanna make it. You just have your starting spine just to get you to the right size if you're doing twin size and etc. I'll be right back. So let's begin number three and four. Three and four should be the same color if you are doing color play. In my case I'm just letting the colors just change on their own uh, but you can do that. So how you start row number three in the future is going to be slightly different and I'll give that tip at the end of number four. So number three where, right where we're sitting is the very corner right here. So here and here is the corner. So on the other side here and here with my thumbs is the corner. So just look at it this way. So as each uh, time that we do a round number three we're going to be increasing uh, that by one as on each side. So when we do number four then in the future there will be an extra one here. So instead of one there will be two next time and then next time you do that there will be three. And this side is also increasing by one. So let's begin number three. Chain four. So one, two, three. That's a double crochet and the extra chain that you want. The fourth one is a chain one space and I want you to double crochet in the same space that you have done your join with. Now you're going to turn the corner. So to turn the corner you're going to chain three and in the same spot you're going to put in a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So this was technically a, a V stitch when I did it before. So right here with a V stitch. So you can see it does a 90 degree turn. Now to get over to this spot you have to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and just come into this single crochet and you're gonna just do a V stitch. So, so double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And this chain five is just gonna sit in limbo and wait for you for the next round. So the next round when you do the shell work is gonna uh, hold that into position. So how do you get to the next one? Chain five. One, two, three, four, five and then V stitch into the next. So I, I'm gonna ask you to do this and I'll see you on the next turn where we'll just reconfirm that you know how to turn and you will notice that this every time you do this round it'll be fast because there's not a lot going on. It's these double crochets that will slow you down a little bit but you make it up in the speed for doing this round. So then chain five, V stitch, chain five, V stitch and etc. I'll see you at the first turn in a moment. So I'm approaching the next corner. So the corner is right here and here. The only difference next time is that there will be two here that you'll see and so it will still be the same spot where you, you're gonna wanna go. So you're just going to V stitch into that one and this is a corner so it's gonna be a V stitch, chain three to turn and a V stitch back into the same one and then you'll end up with a nice 90 degree turn. Okay, so to get to this corner you have to chain five, one, two, three, four, five and then V stitch in the next. So these, edge, these edges will get uh, wider every time you're going around. So a V stitch, chain three and then a V stitch in and then you again have a nice 90 degree turn. Okay, so it will get bigger as you go and then you just keep on going down this side just how you already know it. So chain five and then V stitch into the single crochet and etc. So I'm going to trust you to make the next turn. See if you can identify it and I'll pick you up at the end of this round in a moment. So did you identify your corner? I bet you did. Okay and so then to get here you gotta chain five. So one, two, three, four, five and attach it to the third chain of the beginning chain four. And that's what it would look like. So you should have a nice 90 degree turns and etc. Let's do round number four. So let's get ourselves reset to do number four and right where we're sitting is the wrong place to be starting. So you need to get yourself in this V stitch here and you're going to just slip stitch over into that V stitch and you're going to create a shell. So to start the shell you need to chain three. So one, two and three and then place six more double crochets in there. So with that chain three and the six that gives you the magic number of seven which is what you needed. Okay, so here's the trick. When it's a corner you're going to single crochet right into the chain three itself 
and that will hold that open and then in the next v-stitch another seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And as soon as that's in, that is your corner. So you'll notice that the corners, when you finish this round, always have more of a rounded edge off and it's not until you do these V-stitches where it flattens it off to a 90 degree turn again. So once this one is in, you need to go to the fourth one, two rows below right here in this shell. And you're going to single crochet in there but when you do that, this chain five that's sitting there, make sure that it stays over top of your hook so that this yarn will wrap around and when you single crochet, it'll stay inside the stitch. So not in the front or the back, but actually underneath inside the stitch. In the next V-stitch, you'll apply seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you're going to put in that single crochet again, again into the fourth one here. But when you do that, that chain five has to stay on top. So it gets stuck inside the stitch of a single crochet. And I need you to keep doing that all the way across and I'll see you at the next corner to make sure that you're turning properly and you can see that it's really neat the way that that is going together. And I'll be right back in a moment at the first corner. So let's review on doing a corner. So I'm just coming across, you can see the corner. I've got my single crochet in that's holding down that chain five. And so come into the next V-stitch which is part of the corner and put in seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that chain three space that's part of the corner, single crochet in and then start your next V-stitch on this side. So one, so the V-stitch meaning I uh, put in the shell in the V-stitch, sorry. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, and seven. S see when you did the V-stitches last time, You'll notice that there was one shell here but now because those V-stitches went in, you're gonna notice is that this will increase by one extra shell in V-stitch every time you, you're completing the sequence of three and four. So in here in the fourth, just single crochet around that chain five and then start your next corner which happens to be next. So it'll get wider apart just like the long sides. Okay, so once my seven are in, in the chain three, single crochet just to hold that open and then just kind of continue to turn your project and finish off your corner. So a shell in the V-stitch. So in the transitional yarn, a project like this is quite fun because you don't know how it's gonna really turn out until you're close to the edge or close to the end and so I like the mystery in that in some way. So in the shell work, again going into the fourth one, go around the chain and now you know exactly how to get here because you did it already. So just continue to go across and I want you to turn the corner and it's gonna be your shell, your single crochet in the chain three space and your shell and I'm gonna pick you up here and I'm gonna show you a tip before you begin the sequence all over again. So I will be back in a moment. So I'm coming around and I officially did my turn and I'm doing, I'm finishing the corner now. So four, five, six, and seven. And I'm on the short side now and I just need to finish. So I'm going to single crochet then into the uh, fourth, uh, fourth double crochet and then join it to the top of the first chain three. Now what I want to leave with you at this moment is that I wanna show you a tip before you begin the sequence all over again because you're gonna wanna hear this. So just stand by for a second. So what we have here is that the next round is round number three again which is these V-stitches that you had before. 
The problem is, is right where you stopped here, in order to get to the new corner, you have to slip stitch across that and it will always look out of place. So what I'm gonna strongly recommend to you is that you finish off your yarn and you just do that. So even if it's the same color, finish your yarn so that you don't interfere with any of these nice radiuses. So start a new color, leave a long enough tail so that you can uh, fasten that off with the tapestry needle and when you start round number three again, instead of just slip stitching like you had before, you're just going to join it and then you start. So then you'll chain your four and then you'll put your double crochet in and then chain three and then a V-stitch. So you're moving the corner but you're moving it so that the color sequence doesn't uh, change in the sense that if you uh, if you slip stitch across this it'll be so obvious and it'll be in your face. So what I'm going to recommend to you is that every time you do that and if you wanna do a color play, rounds number three and four should be the same color. So you will wanna keep that sequence but of course you are the creator. You can decide what is right for you but usually when it looks good it means that rounds number three and four in that sequence were good. So you're gonna take this needle and you're just gonna turn it to the back side of the shell work and you're just gonna try to separate your plies. So don't try to separate the strands itself but if you go in between the plies itself it gets stuck really nicely. And that's what you're looking for, right? You don't want these tails to fall out. And so you're just gonna keep jamming it in and you wanna go back and forth a total of three times. Keep your needle so it does not hit th the good side of the work. Just stay within the fibers on the back portion here. See how I'm going in between fibers? And therefore you can safely cut that down and get rid of it. Okay. You obviously wanna do a better job than that. But then you're ready to go on your new corner and all you gotta do now is to repeat three and four and it will keep getting bigger. So even if you changed your hook, it wouldn't matter or the, or the yarn because the fact is that I've already figured out what the spine is going to be for the twin size. So um, it'll actually work out quite nicely for you and it's a really neat idea. And I'm Mikey, your host from the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at yarnspirations.com. Bye-bye.